And from our previous video module, we now know that multi-paction is a concern for space-based applications, as it's a phenomenon that only occurs in a vacuum. And as our need for 5G for fast, lower latency connectivity has increased, we're now reaching for more space-based solutions. So what is multi-paction? So multi-paction is an electron resonance effect, and that occurs when it's an applied RF field accelerates an electrons that are in a vacuum and causes them to impact with the surface. And depending on the energy that's released, one or more electrons can be released into that vacuum area. An avalanche effect, similar to like in a laser. And these electrons can then be accelerated by the applied RF field and impact with that same or a different surface. And when that impact energies, the number of electrons that are released and the timing of the impacts are such that a sustained multiplication of the number of electrons occurs, the phenomenon will grow exponentially. And this may lead to operational problems, not necessarily a catastrophic failure right away, but it can build up and then be a catastrophic failure. So in the RF space, multi-paction will cause loss or distortion of the RF signal, increase of the noise figure, bit error rate, and it can cause damage to the RF components or the subsystems due to the excess RF power being reflected back or dissipated by them, heating issues. The existence of multi-paction is dependent on the following four conditions. These conditions must be met. The first condition, the mean free path of the electrons should be much greater than the spacing between the opposing surfaces which is normally only the case in a good vacuum or and without any further uh, obstruction in the way so that there are other dielectrics. And this means you need some distance, some space that the electron can move in and exist without being invaded with any other impacting at other particles so that an impact can occur. The need of the vacuum over a low pressure environment, uh, something less than say one to four tors. And at this pressure, the mean free path of the electron is on the range of millimeters. And that's a typical manufacturing spacing, the millimeter range. The second condition, the average number of electrons released is greater than the one which is dependent on the secondary electron yield of the surface which in turn is dependent on the field strength, the RF power, between the surfaces. So another way of stating this is saying, when the RF electric field is applied, the electrons bounce between the surfaces, and when the electron energy is high enough that when it hits a surface, the conditions are such that the secondary electrons are emitted. Condition one and two are met. Condition three, the time transition by the electron to travel between the surfaces which it's released from and which its impact is an integer number of half RF wavelengths. It's resonating. Translate that and saying at a very specific situation, when the time the electron it takes to move from surface to surface is an odd multiple of half periods of the RF cycle. Very, very specific. Then and only then can the number of electrons bouncing back and forth multiply. It's synchronized with that applied RF field. This can only make the avalanche effect occur, a very specific condition. And the fourth condition, there's an availability of free electrons at the start to initiate that uh, second electron effect. You need to have electrons. In space, electrons are released from the surface by high energy particles. During, you know, during in-ground testing, you have to provide a source. You have to have a radioactive source. Stortium 90 or some electron gun. And it's always a good assumption, right? Have some sort of electron source. So all four of these conditions must be met. The assumptions that you have some free electrons around, filled with gas, in some component for multi-paction to occur. 
Also note that the surface materials used in the design, including the plating and any impurities for manufacturing, also plays a role in causing multi-packaging. Okay, so how can I identify components that are susceptible to multi-packaging? You can always perform a lab measurement, a lab test on the component or the entire system. Multi-packaging testing by a space qualified test facility is the best way to assure compliance that the components will, pe will perform as expected under extreme conditions. Multi-packaging tests for compliance are not destructive and the components are to meet some high peak or CW power levels and this can be on the order of thousands of watts or so kilowatts and say at 2 gigs and testing is usually between 1 and 15 gigs. So this means time and money, and it's not a solution, it's just compliance. So what can you do so you can design your components to avoid multi packaging at the high power levels that are needed, the systems that are being used. To accurately analyze for multi packaging for real life components with complex geometries, you need an EM solver that shows the real field distribution and saw the electron trajectory is required. And so the ANSYS HFSS release 2020 has a multi packaging feature built into it. And it's a finite element based electromagnetic simulation solver. And HFSS will use the time domain solver finite element solver and couples this solution with a particle movement solver method. And multi packaging is heavily dependent on the physical geometry as well as the surface material properties and the electron movement. So the C model is used in HFSS to describe the behavior of the surfaces. Very important as the surface is where the electron response is important. This is the cause of multi-passion. multi, multi can occur at any surface interface. Now, it doesn't have to be a metal dielectric. It can be a dielectric, dielectric. So an accurate EM field solver is needed. In the C method inside of HFSS, there is a checkbox to account for a dielectric, dielectric interface, a mixed dielectric. And despite the enormous amount of research that has been conducted over the years, the phenomenon of multi passion is hard to predict. Why? Because very specific conditions must be met for a very specific geometry. Many vacuum spaces, voids, gaps can be induced by the manufacturing process, tolerancing themselves, vacuum conditions, operating frequency, frequencies increasing because of 5G requirements, the, the faster speeds, number of users, geometry of the components, the applied RF voltages, surface conditions, surface materials, anything that's used in the design. Again, including the plating and the impurities, they play a role apart from the conditions in space. And so this module was to provide you know, an understanding of the fundamental theories of multi packaging a top level view as it pertains to real manufacturer parts or real geometry. And if you find that this video is helpful, please like us, comment, subscribe to our channel. We have other modules about multi packaging and other topics. Check our channel for more how to videos and visit ansys.com forward slash courses today. Thank you for listening.